Welcome everybody, this is Blender Today, live number 94, streaming live from the Blender studio here in Amsterdam. I was a little bit late because I was compiling Blender, tweeting about it, getting a file ready. This week we have a grease pencil refactor, sculpt news with the face sets, a new way to mask your meshes, like make uh, face sets or polygroups on the fly. There is also um, Cycles Adaptive Sampling finally made it into Blender. There is a news with uh, everywhere, everywhere. There is the interface, there is um, the, the 2.82 news. Yes, I know we're talking about 2.83, but it's, uh, we're also talking about that one. So, <laughs> without further ado, let's see. Let's, let's, uh, let's get started. So, how are you? How is it going? How is everything going? I made a, a little um, recap of last week's episode in this channel. So if you haven't seen it, I want to know what happened in last week in eight minutes. You can go watch that. I will try and make it for today. Um, but um, I, I can't uh, promise how is that going to be. Maybe I can make it shorter. Or maybe we need to talk. Let's, let's talk about it later, later towards the end of the show. Today, six years ago, Blender Cloud was born. The Blender Cloud platform is what gets what keeps this <laughs> building uh, living. With uh, artists and developers can work uh, together. The, the development fund also pays for development development um, um, developers. But in this case, the Blender Cloud is what keeps this building and myself uh, alive here running. So if you want to learn more about what the Blender Cloud is and how you can support Blender by joining the Blender Cloud and getting like training on the Stylized character workflow, for example, or the new open movie projects. This has been running for six years. So happy birthday, Blender Cloud, and happy uh, birthday to the members of the Blender Cloud. Thank you for making it happening. So let's switch to Blender, Blender stuff. <coughs> I got water today, yay. Let's talk about the past. Blender, now the past, come on. Blender 2.82 came out a few weeks ago, but um, thanks to your reports, to the, the reports of the bugs and the crashes, now um, these, um, these specific crashes were uh, fixed and merged, and they're going to be merged into a um, version that is going to be called 2.82a. It's going to be a corrective release, so only fixes. There will be no new features, no responsive refactor, no adaptive, no, no, no. That is for 2.83. This is a fixed release. So it's like a long-term support-ish of the 2.82, but um, some of those fixes are uh, very important, like using crashing, for example, when changing um, uh, from tile to single or saving images from non-image spaces, like if you save it with a weird shortcut, for example. Uh, some of the other ones are more common, but this list is going to get a bit more polished, and next week we hope to get uh, 2.82a, out. I'm going to make a video about it, of course. Everything is a video nowadays, right? So, um, let's let's continue. That was uh, that, That's all for 2.82. So, the last week on Friday, it was the first Friday of the month. It's a day where the developers get together. Actually, we can read some of the notes here on DevTalk. Some of the notes that I'm going to mention now. But because of the meeting was here, was, uh, sorry, was this morning. Uh, some of the things I'm gonna share on this video, on this live stream are not even here yet. So um, on Friday, it was the, um, the um, coding quality day. What does it mean? That all developers, all core developers, the ones that are um, hired by Blender Foundation and everybody that wants to join are working on making the Blender code better. What does it mean? No functional changes, maybe some optimizations, but very small, but mainly just uh, architecture, you know, like changing, making everything a bit more tidy. Um, all the variable names have uh, the same kind of structure and uh, the, I don't know, splitting all the, like, I don't know, splitting. I don't know if, like, it's not really a technical thing, but you can put all of Blender in one file, for example. <laughs> Maybe not, but almost all of it. And if you split it into different files, it makes it easier, more easy to organize. And the best part is that for developers that are coming from outside of the community and it's the first time they open the Blender code and they want to contribute, now it's much uh, better. So every month, one day, all developers 
cleaning up the code. Of course, they also do it during the, the month, but um, this is like a one day where they, they have to do it. So it's pretty nice. Actually, that was, uh, remember the epic money, the million, whatever? Well, part of the, um, the um, investment was to um, the Blender Foundation decided to spend it in there. It's like, okay, now we have a little bit more to spare. Let's make the code better looking and easier to um, navigate so more developers can contribute. So that actually is not functional change, but it is a functional, functional change because it's uh, affecting us in, the, in a good way. So speaking of things that affect us in a good way, Chris Pencil, Refactor, Draw Engine, Vertex Paint, and pretty much everything in Grease Pencil got refactored. Yes, rewritten from scratch. All the modifiers are now much more uh, better performant. The interface changed a little bit to, be, to make them more consistent. Um, modifiers that, for example, the array modifier from Grease Pencil and the array modifier from regular objects, it was actually a bit different. In 2.82, if you see them, they're a little bit different. Now they actually are more consistent. And that example like applies to all of uh, Grease Pencil settings. Not only that, but the performance, the performance. I actually made a video about a blog post that um, the guys wrote, Antonio Asquez wrote this one, uh, and Chris Pencil Refactor. You can go check it out. It's in the code blog, code.blender.org, and you can see here, draw engine refactor. This sounds like it's just like a tiny, <laughs> tiny paragraph, but it's rewriting the draw engine. What is that? The draw engine is what um, you see when you when you see the overlays, for example, the workbench and everything that is drawing objects or overlays in the uh, in the three D view. So <clears throat> let's uh, let me drink. It's water, I swear. So the previous draw engine simply wasn't designed for to handle two D objects, and it was just just wasn't made for it, right? Like the the annotation system from Grease Pencil back in 2.4, so like, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. It was, it was actually more, <laughs> yeah, 10 years ago or so. It just wasn't designed for 2D. So the Grease Pencil was like a hack on top of it. Now it got completely rewritten from scratch, allowing this, um, the Grease Pencil to blend a lot, a lot better, the 3D objects and the, um, to the objects. So now Grease Pencil works much better with EV. It even responds to light. So you can actually light objects of Grease Pencil. So 2D with 3D, it's just uh, just crazy. So yeah, this is made with Grease Pencil. You can see it here on a proof and you can see how fast it is. All these layers and all these materials, they are actually performing really, really fast. Much faster than before. Grease Pencil um, frames per second was wasn't really great. Um, let, let's say it wasn't really great. It, it was it was good, but you needed a really good graphics card. So um, if you didn't have a good graphics card, it could not perform so well. Now it can. So that means that your uh, scenes can be much bigger. So that's that's super nice. Um, Anti-aliasing, all the weird like jagged edges gone. Color mixing is much better. Blend modes. Um, it's just 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 huge. Uh, the lighting now, as, as I mentioned, all the objects respond to light, spotlights, uh, regular lights. So, so, so. Um, the mask system, the new mask system, improved effects. So now the the rim and the blur are much faster to handle. The this is awesome. This is just isn't great. So I think I mean. Chris Pencil was already a big thing for 2.8. This is gonna take it to the next to the next level and is like the foundations for what is to come, right? What it's um what how can it be expanded into the future? And also my favorite feature is vertex paint. What does it mean? I'm painting now, right? I'm I'm painting, and if I no, I'm actually drawing. If I want to paint, so for example, I want to make these lines of a different color, I can just simply change to vertex paint or use um, and use one of the tools over here, like for example, the draw, or I can also use the fill option, tint option, sorry, tint. So you can basically just tint the strokes after you draw them, 
which is basically like vertex painting, but you're not actually changing the materials. So there is a, li a little bit of an overlap here because um, materials are, you can still use them for applying a color, but you can also use them to apply a pattern, a texture on them, and it's different from the vertex paint. So once you are in vertex paint mode, you can use it for um, tinting your colors, or you can also change to uh, tint the, um, to change the material. So you can choose each one, either one. The um, Chris Pencil team is working on an updated version of the uh, template that you open when you do to the animation. So it's gonna be, should be much nicer, much better. How's everything going? How's the, how's the live, stra li live chat stream going on? Um, do you need a pen? You don't need a pen, but it's recommended. Which tablets would you recommend to begin, dra begin drawing on animation? Really, any tablet will do. There is a, everybody will recommend the Wacom ones, but you can use really anything like Huion, XP Pen. Um, there is uh, many, many brands. I personally use a Wacom, and at home I have a tiny, like 50 euro, 60 dollar, like this big. Um, into us as Wacom, so it's it works, gets the job done, and it's like this big, so nice. You can like, I use it more than the mouse nowadays. All right, this video is not sponsored, by the way. It's just a nice, <laughs> nice thing, nice hardware. All right, let's uh, let's continue. Dun dun dun. Um, Oh, by the way, yeah, this actually I forgot to mention. There is a new blog post was came out actually the day after when we um, when I did the live stream. Is there a user interface workshop? It's a write up on what changed. Um, what are the plans for the uh, user interface um, team in the coming months? William Reinish, part of the um, uh, Blender user interface module, came here for a couple of days and we had a bunch of meetings. We talked about asset management. We talked about the um, concept of projects and libraries inside of the asset management. The, um, um, the brush is also the brush system. Is it part of the asset management or not? And also the everything note, uh, or everything notes project where there is new types of notes, right? How, how do they look? How do they behave? So um, super nice read up, go and check it out. Remember, this is just a proposal. This is like exploration. It doesn't mean that they now look like this, or they will look different. It's just a proposal. It's just a, just throwing ideas out there. So make sure you leave your comments um, just to just to see what you guys think. All right, let's um, let's continue. I think we are well. Chris Pencil, that's huge. Uh, so congratulations, Antonio Vasquez, Antias Mendiola, Daniel Martinez Lara, Clement Foucault at all, Charlie Jolie. So it's been a big, big, big thing. You've seen the patch is huge, just like insane. Go give him some love here and some screens on fire and, 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 and stuff. Super, super cool. All right. Next, another big feature that was around, it was um, people were crazy about it for so long, for, for, for years about the um, adaptive sampling. What does it mean? Right now, in cycles, when you set, for example, the amount of samples, the amount of and the number of times the, each pixel is going to be like calculated to get rid of the noise and make it nice smooth, um, it's a fixed number. You can just specify how many numbers. Basically, the, the higher the number, the more um, time it's going to take, but the more noise-free it's going to be. It's going to be no noise, pretty much. There is a new setting called adaptive sampling, which if you just enable it, just turn it on, it should render faster in many situations. For example, when you have a big surface in the background, for example, that your character, for example, is up here, right? And you have in the background a flat color. That <clears throat> the pixels all the way to the end in the back would take the same amount of samples than the ones here in front. And that is slow to render, right? So uh, sometimes, for example, if you have caustics, like uh, when you shine a light through a cup or a piece of glass, those uh, samples, I would have the same amount of samples number than the back that you don't need. So you need more detail here, but not so much detail in the back. Now you, um, you can specify with this new um, setting, 
adaptive sampling that it will automatically, out of magic, it would compute, let's see, let's use CPU. And I have this file here that uh, my friend from Bone Studio made for me. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller because this computer is not so beefy. Let's make it 50% and let's render. So this, um, if I close it, it's gonna close it or? All right, so this uh, render now has adaptive sampling on. So it means that the monkey is gonna render with a different um, um, amount of samples where it needed, needs it the most. So here you can see in um, the thread, you can see all the love that it's getting. And um, this is based on a on a paper, on two papers. It's, it's inspired, not based, but inspired by two um, papers. One of these ones is by uh, Renderman, the render engine by Pixar. So this is, if you're into the details of this, maybe you wanna have a look at it, maybe. So, this is taking a while to render. I can't render on GPU here, I don't have it set up, but um, you can see where this is going. So you can see that the parts that are empty are just rendered super fast, and these parts are taking longer. But the other parts, which usually would take about uh, the same time, no, they don't because it's putting more render, more samples here than less samples around it. So, super nice. Let's uh, let's move on. So this is the name of the paper in case you want to check it out. It's called An Advanced Path Tracing Architecture for Movie Rendering by all these fine people. Super nice. I understand everything here, I swear. <laughs> it must be super interesting actually, reading. You had all, this, all the details on how to render eight million lights in Coco. Seriously, eight million lights. At that point, what is a light? What is, what is not a light, right? Everything is a light. <laughs> Insane. So that is a, uh, that is adaptive sampling. It's in uh, Blender 2.83. It's going to be in 2.83, but you can already try it in the build bot, in builder.blender.org. Super great. Um, what else? What a week. Face set. So this is in sculpt. <laughs> sculpt mode. This mode that has been getting so much love lately in the last couple of versions of Blender, it's getting even more. There is a new, um, there is a new setting, a new setting, a new uh, feature that is called um, face sets. In other softwares, it's similar to call to um, like poly groups or so. It's a fast way to um, to make groups of your of your faces. Basically, it's face based. And you're gonna see that it depends on how many faces you have. You're gonna see that the edges, but that's because it's one per face. Basically, it's a quick way to create kind of masks um, or selection sets from your um, from your mesh, so you can hide them or unhide them. It's uh, it's it works with the multi res even. It has undo support. It has a bunch of oh whoa whoa! I got visitors. I got this. Oh my gosh! Well, what is I don't this? Wanna interrupt here, but hello, hello. Who is this? You see, this doesn't happen in the live streams. Oh, what is it? Look. Oh my God. Totally did not expect it. I got a cake. Look, it's cake. It's cake. Happy. From what? From Happy the Blender Cloud. Cloud birthday, yeah. Oh my gosh. Hello. Hello, how are you? Cake, there is cake and it's not a lie. So how are you? Yes. Introduce you. Okay. Okay. To Hello, here? yeah, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me fine? Yeah. Yeah, we should. Be yeah, able, we find yes. out, yes. How is it going? Can I eat? <laughs> yes, yes, you can eat. Uh, and in the meantime, I can, uh, I can, I can talk. Yes. How I, are I, you, I, by yeah. the way? How's, yeah. how's I'm going? I'm fine. It's been, uh, it's been fairly busy, but uh, you it's... haven't. Last time you were here was in episode fifty. Wow. Yeah. You, really? Yeah, I remember. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wasn't here. We were somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, that was at home. I was doing <laughs> this at home, so it was fifty episodes ago almost. Yeah. So that's awesome. So. Blender Cloud. What is the Blender Cloud? <laughs> <laughs> actually, like I was just cutting out the cake, and everybody was like, "Speech, speech, speech, speech." So I was like, "No, actually, I didn't really plan this through. I was no? just, you know, hoping to enjoy the cake with everyone." But uh, then I was uh, recounting the memories of the 
early cloud days when I was uh, in the uh, Anthropodoc at the studio, like in the, in old, the, old, in the old place, like uh, in, in a little space. And it was just me and Ton at the beginning. And I was just at this desk looking outside to Amsterdam in the zoo and just like learning how to code and building the platform as, uh, as, as we were going on. And, uh, and then Ton would drop by and sit on a couch and we would talk like four hours about like the crowdfunding for the Gooseberry project because that was why we were actually building the cloud as, as a platform to make this uh, film project. And, um, and we were going to uh, f- fund that by providing a lot of extra content. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pablo pa- pa- is just doing some uh, relevant searches. <laughs> that are, um, yes. uh, and so then he would just drop by and we would talk about all these things and how he would... Uh, um, how like how it would help us to fund the film and uh, to make it uh, and to make it happen and um, and then like we <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> and so then we went out there and used it as our crowdfunding platform that enabled us to ultimately make the gooseberry project and um, as a tradition like we we did a couple of videos when the cloud birthday was happening so this was like the second there was the a cloud second, birthday second episode so yeah. that was with the gooseberry team and uh, uh, at the time when we when we made the original video the happy song from uh, uh, Pharrell was popular and everybody was using it to make a little dance so we did that too and uh, yeah, this is, doesn't really show much about what the blender cloud is about <laughs> yeah <laughs> it shows people though so that's project gooseberry yeah so but basically yeah so it was like our platform and with that we were able to to really make it through the whole gooseberry project and to share the progress of the film and uh, to just uh, to just yeah share all the assets and uh, the making of and it was uh, it was fantastic way to engage like with the with the supporters and people who were who were enabling us to do it. So then uh, the cloud is, is still there. What is the cloud nowadays? What is it? Why, why is it important for Blender? Do you yeah. think? Yeah, like I think the cloud gives you like uh, um, a glimpse at uh, what is happening in the uh, in an animation studio, like a place that uses Blender on a daily basis and like a bleeding edge version of Blender. So it's like a combination of like the latest and like really the, the engagement between the artists and the developers. Like that's really where a lot of it happens. And uh, we share, like the artists share this process and the progress of the work that they're doing because they're actually making stuff they're making assets which are released with a permissive license which is a great way it's a great resource for anyone that wants to know how things are done like to learn by example how things are done to get them for themselves and to explore and play around with them and uh, at the same time it's like uh, there is a lot of training a lot of learning material that is like more structured so if you want to learn things a little bit more in a structured way you can do that too but the special part is really like being able to see. Currently, there is a, a short film project happening, Coffee, Coffee Run. Run, and you can just go there and you can see what people uploaded like uh, six hours ago. Like if you scroll down a little bit here too, here like too? I think you see, yeah, like you see here, like the seven hours ago, Andy, yeah. yeah, Andy uploaded something. So like if you actually click on it on the first clip, you can see or this clip, it doesn't matter. It's like little uh, segments of this uh, of the short, and then you can just see, oh, that's uh, that's what is. Uh, that's what's going on. Wow. And, if, and if you start digging a little bit more, then you find your own narrative. You understand like the different iterations. You find out what people are doing. And, uh, and that's really, really amazing because then in the end, we are able to publish this uh, uh, for the whole world to enjoy. But like the, the process, the behind the scenes, it's like an exclusive thing. It's really, it's really everything how things were done here for space profile adjustments. Uh, so it's NPR uh, short film and it's... Uh, Made with EV cycles. Uh, yeah, it's EV. It's EV, and like uh, recently, <laughs> recently there were some experiments that Andy did, like combining like uh, vector passes from EV to get some uh, t- from from blur. cycles to get from some motion blur effects uh, comped on top of the EV. That's amazing. So the whole making of and this it, this happened also for the previous project for people that are not aware. This happened for like in the past with different um, yeah project with the with here in, in the cloud we did. And the Asian 327. Yes. And, uh, spring. 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 Yeah. yeah. I mean, we did a lot of films. Like, the Caminandas also was done here. You can like, uh, go and see yeah. this stuff. So there is the whole history. And, uh, and you know, sometimes uh, people leave comments and then you can engage a little bit. Like in this, this project especially, is 
interesting because it's built starting from this character that you see here in this uh, in in the viewport, uh, which is like a rig that is uh, available. You can download, like yeah, that. and then you can just download it and use it for your own animation because it's just like a, you know a CC BY rig. So you just provide credit and then you just uh, enjoy it and use it for yourself. But like to really push it to the limit, we started thinking, oh, what if we make a little bit more of an involved. Uh, animation test, which then turned out to be a full-fledged uh, uh, one-minute uh, short film, but it's like <laughs> things get out of hand. Now when people say no, because NPR is forgotten in Blender, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, no, no there is like serious work, and like especially like if you let people like Simon Thomas now is uh, like now he went on a quick holiday, but he will be back, and like the contribution he was doing already, like in the shading, was just like you know mind-blowing, and he will share more. And at the same time, uh, Julian is making like this very thorough. Uh, modeling like workflow character or character creation workflow and is really getting in depth into like topology at this point like this we just uh, uh, he just released it last week this I can video wow it's a whole video about topology yeah, yeah. oh my gosh yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's insane. So like uh, all this stuff, it's based on the content that that we make. So it doesn't really come out of thin air. It's like the work that actually went into making the characters, and he really makes a, an effort to explain it as clearly and as nicely as possible. So it's really worthwhile material. I know this has this is not. I haven't seen this in the community so far. What about rigging? People are asking for rigging in the chat. Are we going to see some uh, some of that? Well, I mean, the meter actually is really good at explaining how he puts together his rigs. So we did one video that I don't this think... This character is rigged. Yeah, it hasn't been published yet, the, the, the walkthrough that he did of the rig. But I really, uh, we are going to do it like super soon. I just have the video there and we need to find a place where this has to be published and visible. Um, but uh, after that, yeah, it should be it should be there. Yes. Yeah. So like it could basically be attached here, and then you can see how the rig is done. And um, in parallel, maybe he could work on something like a, a kind of a revisited or extended version of what the rigging, the humane rigging, is. Humane, right. humane there is a timeless and amazing rigging training on the Blender Cloud that people to this day still send emails about how they found that useful. So I wouldn't, you know, discard it so easily. No, 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 no. But of course, Blender has like some new constraints or new things that happened in the past oh, 10 years. <laughs> so it's like, rigging this is like really old. Yeah. Blender 2.6. But it still it's, applies. It's to gold. Them. It's gold. It's really good. And uh, from Nathan Vagdal, and he was like the rigger on Sintel, and he rigged on Big Wag Bunny. And some of the principles are just timeless. So it's really like, and it's the mindset of a rigger, and that's what it does. But like something that goes a little bit beyond, that's uh, something that would be very nice to would do. Nice yeah, to absolutely. Yes. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, I don't want. I didn't want to hijack the whole. You probably okay. have a. You probably have a list of things that I you. I was talking about the sculptor. Uh, yeah, I have a list actually. There was a the grease pencil refactor made it in. I don't know if you were. Oh, uh, okay. You were, um, no. No. Well, I mean, I knew something was going to happen. Lots of things Gris happened. Got, it's just kind of saying the grease pencil got re re wrote, oh, re okay. rewritten yeah. since last year. Nice. It's just uh, um, Antonio Plema uh, joined forces, so it's like Evie grease pencil. Pfft. They rewrote the draw engine and they yeah just made a whole bunch of tools to make use of it like a uh, vertex paint you can vertex paint in grease pencil that's oh crazy. yeah super yeah. nice it makes it a lot more art artistic uh, like um, then I don't know what else I mean you can watch the live stream but also adaptive sampling got in <laughs> just saying and the uh, sculpt uh, features I was just talking about the face sets a wow. Yeah, it's a, it's like a train; it never stops. It's like never uh, unstoppable I, force. Uh, yes. One yeah. wise man once said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. there is like an unstoppable force. Mm. And next week we are gonna have even. I would I would suggest you to watch next week. <laughs> Every, maybe the recap because next week we might have all the things that people are uh, asking, asking for. for. Yeah, what are people asking for? Oh, what the resolution oh, undo yeah. improvements? Yeah, VR. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. we are no, no, a lot of people are asking for it, but it's always cool to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Super nice. I mean, it's good too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, object type, open VDV volumes and stuff. Hmm. It's crazy. It's like a completely different software. So you're telling me it's worth waiting like uh, one week more before getting into the like. Uh, it's just like. Oh yes. Uh, uh. But if you read <laughs> online that that you shouldn't use MantaFlow because it's still buggy, yeah, don't follow that advice. Actually, use it and report the crashes because. Yeah. Who said? Like, I mean, otherwise I, it's gonna. I just found some mm. tweets. No. Don't. That's uh, not. That's not how you use Blender. That's not a good uh, <laughs> approach to open source, right? The whole point about it is like a pro tip. 
yeah. use it yeah. and uh, report the issues and contribute to making to to fixing those issues. Like propose to make different um, tests with different hardware and just check it out. All right, Paolo, my microphone is slow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I, le I leave you to it. Okay, sure. I think, yeah. yeah. Drop and by uh, whenever. I'm uh, every Monday around five. I'm yeah, right yeah, here. yeah. It's just like uh, enjoy the cake. I mean, for whatever oh, yeah. you can, because I, it's I, like okay. Well, yeah, it's not yeah, nice to not, eat with yeah, the people like watching. But I was sorry, I was <laughs> 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 couldn't stop <laughs> myself. All right. Well, uh, thanks everyone, and uh, enjoy the show. And um, see you soon. I was just checking the comments if anyone no, was I said, saying please something. Please make Blender free. You're in luck. You, it's actually free Just already. for today. Just for today. Okay. Live special free. price. Fantastic. Right. Bye-bye. Thank you for the cake. See and you. I'll see yes. you later. Yes. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. That, was, that was Francesco City, producer, COO of Blender. <laughs> uh, we work in so many projects together with Francesco. It's so, so nice. And uh, we work on the Blender Cloud in the past. We work on Blender Community. We made a website in the Blender Cloud with the first version, second version we did it. And um, super nice to have him over. So maybe I can get him for the for the hundredth episode. All right, let's uh, let's continue. We we still have things to to talk about. Sculpt face sets. That's what I was talking about. It's a new way to mask or like create quick uh, groups of vertices that you can hide. Fairly easy. Fairly easy. Let's see. How how's it going? Everything going here in the chat? <laughs> All right. So to the no sculpting. There's so, <laughs> so many templates. All right. So the new uh, face sets. You may not see them as soon as you enable that. Mike, Mike is pretty low, really. I um. Okay. I I put it a bit higher. I hope uh, I hope it works so basically yeah basically polygroups here like pip toggle is saying you can basically just um first face sets and the overlay is a bit low by default it's um it's a setting that is going to be fixed but if you open blender now and don't update your setting your default settings it's going to have the face sets a bit low so if you turn it on you're going to see some color overlay also it kind of makes sense because there is always a face set but so, so if you start sculpting, or if you, sh if you have it enabled always, it's going to be like green or pink or blue because it's always on. So maybe it should show only after you start making a face set, face set maybe. So the way they work, you, just, um, you can use the menu up here to create a face set from masked. So if you made a mask, you can create one face set from that. From the visible, which is pretty much everything that you see in the viewport, uh, you can invert those, you can create, and you can randomize the colors in case you don't like the colors that you have there. So the way you work with a um, with a shortcut is with the W shortcut. W it will bring this uh, um, pop-up, this pie menu, where you can set for mask, form visible, or invert visible. So it's very handy that you can just make a mask, like Control shift click to make a mask, and then you can... W face set from masked and there you go. Now you can hide this with H and hide with um, hide with Alt H, or you can do Shift H to invert the selection and then you can press H. So Shift H H and you can turn on and off different parts of your mesh while you're sculpting. So it's pretty handy, pretty handy. You can clear the mask. So with A you clear the mask. Did you know that A shortcut is pretty handy when you're doing uh, masking? So you can invert the mask. You don't have a mask. Clear visible. So it will take a while to get used to the to the shortcuts, but once you have them, it's pretty pretty fast to do it. You can also use the menus, but I recommend getting familiar with the shortcuts for masking. You can read more here in this thread. It's in D6070 in developer.blender.org. You can read more. You can see more about the shortcuts. Shift W to expand the sets. Um, control while expanding. Ah, yeah, Shift W is going to let you build a mask from where you have. So if you do Shift W, whatever you have the mouse is going to make, uh, it's going to expand the mask from there. So you can see Shift W lets you expand it. And then you press H and bam, Shift H to invert. So very nice. All right, let's let's uh, let's continue. Let's see. 
Uh, next, face sets. Um, miscellaneous. Okay, so I think we are good to move into a more general area of improvements before we continue. So, miscellaneous. USD. That, uh, that I don't have to show anything here. The universal scene description format that got the export capabilities in Blender 2.82 now can also export metaballs. So for all of you metaball lovers, uh, can, uh, can, can export USD now. The, this is a change in a very deep part of Blender. It's a ghost or key map. Ghost is like this system that manages all the inputs like uh, in the key map. And now there is a, this is a very internal change, but it has some benefits already. For example, this one, it's a, the text repeating events, repeating events. So when you press a, a key and you repeat, press it many times, it will detect it. So with that nice addition, this fix of a bug reported almost two years ago got now fixed. So it seems that when you were like rotating, for example, and hold the R key for rotating, which, why would you do that? Um, in Blender, it doesn't make sense until now, but if you have like sticky keys or those, um, this system that is called sticky keys for when you hold it, uh, tap a key and hold it to perform a change. And that is very handy, for example, when you're sculpting or painting, you wanna change the brush temporarily. You don't have to press paint and then press to go back. You can just hold the button and paint and then release and you're gonna be back on the other tool. It's very, very handy. So it's a, it's a nice addition. We might see sticky keys not too far from now. I seen a patch that is on the review, just uh, like a test, so I'll go check it out. Check, oh, well, go check it out. I'm not giving a link, but uh, I don't have a link here. But if, uh, if you search for sticky keys, you should find something. Do I have <laughs> another visitor? <laughs> Look at that. Oh, the door is now right in the frame. So yeah. parties are over. Exactly. This, it's a, this is an open source. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Say hi to the live Felinto. Hey, everyone. The live Felinto here. Just to ask some questions, are we there already? Uh, no, actually, I'm still talking about stuff because we had a, uh, um, we had, well, okay, okay. cloud celebration anniversary. Cloud celebration, yeah, that was that was a lot of people uh, celebrating, and I was eating cake. So hey, everybody <laughs> is saying hi. Hello. Hello, everyone. If you speak Portuguese, you can also say hi. So I was just talking about the, the sticky keys um, uh, test patch that is going around, but uh, I don't want to tease that much. The one that, if you keep it pressed, and then you can press something else, or? Yeah, exactly. That's the one. All do, right. you, do you like it? Uh, I, I see a lot of potential in it, yes. <laughs> Especially for painting. Like, if you want to switch to a tool to do a quick fix and then go back. For example, you're painting with a color, but you want to smear. Uh, just that one part. You, you don't have to smear, paint, and then go back. And then, like, remember which one was the tool I was in, you know? So in this case, you can just hold, I don't know, whatever for smear and then release and you're back. So it actually uh, makes you use less shortcuts. I, I was thinking about the, the the sticky option as in things happening after you release the key. Oh. We had uh, that in the past as a... Uh, that's another kind of sticky, yeah. Yeah, and that was a bit of a um, big no. It's like we have for selection, right? For vertices when they happen when you release. Yeah. It's cool. It's a different... Uh, I think it's going to have a, a big impact. So, right, more uh, changes, little small changes in the UI, especially for the Mac OS users, all 10 of them. <laughs> now, I'm just kidding, because I always make a joke that uh, there is five Blender users on Linux, and <laughs> for Mac, there must be like 50. When, And then what, 100 on, on Windows? What's the baseline? <laughs> yeah, and I, I heard there is a lot of people using Windows nowadays, so yes. So now, more better icons, basically. Um, the icons should be uh, like more folders, like for Python or for like backup and music now they have they have those so it just looks a bit better and the same for um, some windows folders now they're like onedrive and users and scripts they're gonna be that's super nice they yeah. have a nice icons yeah that's super nice so let's talk about the, some fixes i want to give a shout out in this fix by Ishbos Amiya. he looked into fixing the suing and self-collision issue so apparently there was, uh, you know, the suing feature in cloth. I think not a lot of people know that you can sue in <laughs> sue in 
I, su- I didn't know. I mean, I've seen videos actually. Uh, yeah, but you know, you knew that it existed, right? Not necessarily, to be honest. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> well, now you can. Well, so for a while, actually, from many versions ago, you can basically have a piece of cloth, another piece of cloth, put some lines, call those edges, uh, so you like to sew them, like you can mark them as such, and then it oh. just does that basically here, this thing. So what you see here is not new. There was a bug, and now there is a, with self collision, and now it works properly. Uh, but yeah, this is how you build cloth usually. Yeah, I remember people asking for those features via add-on. Ah, pff, no, like back in the days. Yeah. So and there is also more f- more um, fixes in the UI. Actually, the cloth collision settings are now also available in the hair dynamics because in two point uh, eighty two. This actually I didn't mention, but now the hair dynamics is unified with cloth stuff. Mm-hmm. So oh, I didn't mention the release not. No, the release um, not. Yeah, no. All right. So the uh, weld modifier now it doesn't destroy your vertex groups anymore. <laughs> <laughs> if you use a weld modifier in two point eighty two, it might remove your um, your vertex groups. That's no longer the case. Super nice. Then uh, Manta Flow. If you had issues with Manta Flow last week or in 2.82, of course, uh, try getting the latest latest uh, build bot from builder.blender.org because there is so many improvements and optimizations in like sub- subframe sampling for effects or you can do it now. You can also enable disable effector, effectors um, per object. You can have bounding boxes for effectors. There is optimizations. There is so many. I, I don't have them all here to list them, but to, to list, but it's just, uh, just so many. Smoke simulation, multi-grid, if you go stack stock Sebas, the developer, you can find. You know, some of those fixes for MentaFlow, they're supposed to be in the 2.82a. Really? S- yeah. So he was asking about that because we're planning on Thursday yes. to have the 2.82a release. 2.82a release. 2.82a release. Awesome. Well, there is a okay more optimizations, and then we go to the to the to the Q and A to the Q and A. So depth graph, there is a, a one FPS improvement on <laughs> the demo file in Spring. Oh, but the Spring does a heavy file. It's a huge, it's a very heavy file. It's a, it's a file with the, all the characters and all. It's like 2.3 gigs, and it has the whole the whole scene. So one FPS, it's a lot. Um, together with a whole bunch of other uh, fixes. The this is I just mentioned it because it's a nice it's a one step towards what's gonna come next week. So it's a teaser. Native direct X in Blender? No, that's Native. not a teaser. We switch. We are dropping <laughs> OpenGL. No, I'm kidding, 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 kidding. Uh, um, no, it's like the first step into supporting uh, direct... Um, uh, Open uh, virtual reality. Yes, the, especially the Windows Mixed Reality um, platform. Then uh, a little public service announcement for add-on developers. You need to update, change your wiki URL um, option to rename it to doc URL because not every add-on has a wiki page, right? And the add-ons can have a what kind of documentation though yeah. that is. And, and you're, you're trying to have those changes now then better now than later because of the whole LTS. Yeah. So to help people maintain only the add-on in the LTS and then with not a lot of changes when it comes to master. Super good. And uh, there is a new um, 2D camera rig in the add-on camera rigs. So if you look at the add-on, well, I'm not going to, we don't have a lot of time, but just look at the add-on. There is a new 2D camera rigs. You can read more here. Is uh, This rig is mostly used for 2D shots when the camera is static and the action happens in front of it, like a theater stage. So super nice if you need your camera rigs. And uh, that is all for now. Let's go to the questions. I don't have any time. I don't have any time. Do you have time? Can you hang out until the end? I can. Today I can, yes. Of course. Awesome. Because we had a meeting today, right? The meeting was in the morning, so it was all good. So now we have all the time in the world. So let's go here. First question by Alex Medina. Hola, Pablo. Checked out the roadmap and was l- uh, was a little bit disappointed. Oh. No plans to improve the UV editor. Um, at all. At all. Is there any, any plans on that? It's very important for game development. Yeah, I think a lot of people have been talking about it and... Um, it's been a, like a, a topic that has been so quick question, quick answer. And uh, no, right? There's no direct developer no. assigned to work on it right now. 
um, for many years it was considered an area that was actually working it's like mesh modeling you know it just works you can make it better of course but it was just work it was even like praised above the competition quote yeah, unquote but yeah. I probably the other ones got better <laughs> uh, over up. time so it's just and people were saying it was a bit too loud so that's why I ah really yeah I can, I can put you down so maybe put it down so I can speak here in yeah front there of you it. go I put you down all right um, so yeah, no, unfortunately not, but any development help is welcome. So if you are a developer, <laughs> want to find a, uh, orphan area. Oh, Pablo, si. since you are part of the UI team si, si. and love themes and all that, si. I know you do. could you do something about the gizmos tooltip? When you hover over them, it should be disabled in the 3D view and only seen in the toolbar. The gizmos tooltip, when you hover over them, should be disabled in the 3D view, Peter. The Gizmos tooltip. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I see. So if you enable the tool, the, the Gizmos, um, you have this thing. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, it gets on the way, of it's course. It's a bit annoying. Yeah, I mean, it's it gets on the way. So yes, I valid point. And the second question is: unselected custom bone colors are not fully saturated by default. It seems they are not. Ha they are hard coded to have only 0 0.9 until selected. Can we have them full saturated for unselected and then selected should have a different color like this? Um, is another setting for each one of the color sets? The thing is that you need to... to this is going to make uh, all the themes more complex because there is 20 color sets, right? And I, Yeah, I think the, the idea to have hard-coded saturation on top of the... The colors is to make it simpler just to change one color and then everything just follows suit. So maybe we need to mm. either change this, like make them... It, yeah, it, it's saturated. Um, I, I, I need to see it in uh, with the actual picture, but I'm going to keep it in mind. Thank you. So, okay, next question. Pablo, That's, Pablo. Oh, thank you again for what you're doing. I adore your show. Very friendly, productive. I really want to see Jack Luke as a guest. What do you think about up PGE and EV integration? That'll be great if Epic Games supported the platform. Blah, 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 blah. It's blah. worth it. There are so many tutorials. What's your <laughs> take on the open up PGE? Uh, oh, up PG I haven't tried it myself. I love the fact that people just made a, a, a branch, just took the, uh, the Blender game engine, made a branch, and keep working on it. That's That's pretty much how many of the projects in Blender start, you know, like just a developer getting grease pencil, which was meant for annotations, and then just improve it, and then it just, just yeah. works, and then it goes merged back. Um, I don't know about the case of Blender, uh, the ABGE. I don't know how how it's the code, even, or how it's... Yeah, personally, as a user, I try to steer people towards already more established game engines that they are in the open source world, like Godot, Maybe even Armory, it still looks nice. Maybe it's not as mature. While the PG is a nice experiment, but as a former Blender Game Engine developer and user, I think there's we are in a moment in the, in the Linux ecosystem where people can actually find more well-supported alternatives. Yeah, and uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but the thing is, you have a thing like, you have an engine like Godot, with, yeah, where you can export to like any platform you want like even webgl you can do like a switch <laughs> game or it's it's a uh, it's just a bit of and the community yeah. it has and the and, and improvements and it's co it's constantly has like um a patreon that it keeps it even got a epic mega grant godot godot engine in case people don't don't know or they're not familiar with it they just oops it's a uh, uh, it's just Amazing, and I tried it, and it's super, e super easy, super friendly. It's open source. It's it's just, yeah. it's just I, great. I did their main tutorial. They have a really good documentation. It's part of the things they they sponsor with their the grants from Patreon. Really? So, yep. With the that's mm -hmm. so nice. So, so they sponsor the how to make your game. If the first game is a uh, is constantly updated and maintained. Oh yeah, I made I made the first game. Where is it? Actually, I, I made my first game in Godot, and it was felt so fulfilling. The mm. one, yeah, where you have to escape from the enemies. And, and the enemies, it's kind of, I remember. So nice. Okay, let's go, because we have no time. No time. Uh, Pascal, hello, Dalai. Modeling tools feels like they're being left out. <laughs> Every area <laughs> has been like left out. Every week the same. Everywhere. <laughs> 
modeling, UV, and then the sequence editor, and nobody says nerves. <laughs> <laughs> they are the most left out. Okay, what's Campbell doing since he's the module owner? What is Campbell doing? <laughs> Maya has some great tools with rich features, while in Blender you have to get tons of add-ons. Come on, in Maya you also need like a ton, like at least Jeez, this you big need add -on of for Fur, you need add-on for... Uh, but I'm not here to discuss Maya. No, 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 no. I didn't. Okay, anyway, so um, half of them are broken. Knife tool and loop cut should be combined and might much work better. Pen twist, lattices. This one should be added. And edge flow, mesh meter editing. So they want more tools. More the tools idea is that for every really every well, they did that for for, instance, for Campbell to work in tools besides the main development. He's now mainly assigned to work with high modeling of high poly mesh. Yeah. So to improvements and, and instead of just keep working on tools at eternum because it's never gonna be finished, that is for him to be able to do one, two tools every release or every beacon, which means mostly working with the tools and gives us to make sure that at least the ones we have are really fully finished and then at some point you can pick up on new tools. Why not? Yep, would be great. Um, but, but yeah, also remember that unlike Maya, all the add-ons that you see online for Blender, for modeling, they are open source. They're pure so GPL. You can just get GPL, it, share just it. Just get it and bam. Make. Pablo, not Six. my question, but I saw it last week and you ran out of time to answer it, so I'm going to repost it. Thank you for the repost. Uh, Pono Marov, <coughs> Pono Marov Max asked, Hi Pablo, hi Dalai, AMD will soon introduce new GPU with real-time ray tracing Ooh. support. Do they share any information for Blender developers to quickly implement support for new GPUs as soon as possible? Do they share? Like they, they do, we do... We don't, we don't, we don't work mostly with a lot of NDAs, so we tend to work only with public information unless really, really strictly required. And it only makes sense for Blender to adopt tools which you have open standards, and those are usually shared beforehand. So the one, but I think AMD is using an open standard this time, right? Yeah. Unlike uh, optics. Optics, yes. So, so in a way, yeah, the answer is yes. We have a close relationship with AMD, but it's always up to them to first reach out, reach out, which they do yeah. often. And which we don't, we, but we don't have a graphics card with that capability yet. No, but... Sometimes we get the uh, unreleased hardware, but yes. it's not, uh, not the case now. Hola, Pablo, big question. Coffee with sugar or coffee with no sugar? No sugar, please, no sugar. And if you have a cake, sugar yeah. enough from the yeah, cake. Yeah, sugar enough, <laughs> but no, 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 no added sugars. Pablo, is it in baking possible now? It is not, or is it? Wait. It's not, I don't think it is. No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. No. Um, will we get a C++ API for Blender at some point? We might, actually. Uh, uh, Brecht has a, if you go to DevTalk, you can see a proposal from Brecht, our chief architect, to have Blender more extensible. And this would allow in the future to have a more, why not, a, a C++ API for plugins. So check it out, it's Ooh. on DevTalk. DevTalk forums. All right, so hi, Pablo, how are you? I'm new in Blender, and one thing I'm really worried about is what is the per bad performance modeling? I mean, compared with other packages, once I go over 50,000 <laughs> quads... No, no, but it, it's, it's a good question. With so, subdivision, yeah. Oh. Subdivision, because sub so, uh, subdiv is a CPU. We have two problems. One is open subdiv, which changed a, a little bit in from 2.7 to 2.80, but you plan to not bring back the performance, something different, to try to have a GPU-based open subdiv for everything. But also when it comes to high poly mesh editing, we even, without su open subdiv even, we're aiming at, oh, we have 2.7 as a baseline. We want to have at least that performance. But that's still so slow compared to industry standards when it comes to expectation. So we're also trying to have this as a, as a goal. So yeah. we know that as a problem, but... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I have two 1080 Ti. It doesn't doesn't make a difference. Uh, no, it doesn't make a difference because CPU base. Well, uh, a little bit of both, but yeah, like when you want to update, you might want to do incremental updates only. Yep. Right. Hi, Pablo. When do we get more control over how lights work in Eevee? Light works in Eevee. It's easier to just how light works in Eevee. Uh, it's a very vague question, but we do have the probes. I hope you're using already. Light probes. And we do have also shader AOV in Eevee. 
Shader not Airbnb. in master thing, but we have not in not in not in master, but it's being worked on. Yeah, so that's going to help as well to some fine tuning. It's in is in uh, yeah, and also remember you can um, in anywhere in Blender you can basically just right click and search for online manual, and you should be well when it opens uh, because I don't have it here. But basically, if you go to the here to the manual, you should no reference point light type. Oh. So for some things you have it. No, not in this. Ah, no, there was a thing broken with the manual because there was a, a, it's broken at the moment, but it should work in 2.7. Uh, something broke because the, the URL changed from dev to latest. Um, another question, please. On the Blender Open Movies, do you do the composing directly in the same file as a 3D scene or in a separate file? Separate file, usually. Yeah. It's um, The compositing not always is done by the people... Like there is, there is many layers actually. We we actually talked about it in uh, and Andy talked about it in the Blender Conference pipeline. Blender Conference Andy pipeline. <laughs> Let's see if it finds it. There you go. The production pipeline of <laughs> Spring. Forty minutes of wisdom. So good. This it's talk was so good. So good. It 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 mentions everything from everything like how we do open movie projects here. You can see how the files are set character, character name, the maps, and then how everything is assembled. No secrets saved. Everything is here. Look, render, spring, boom, back. Animation, lighting, simulation, and comp. This is the part you want to see. This, this is exactly what you're talking about, comp. So very nice. Go check it out. Production of Pipeline in Blender Conference 2019. Thank you. Pablo, it's me, Damian. Hola, Damian. Hola. Uh, so watching our show since 2.80 Alpha. Oh. Ooh. It's when it all started, right? No. I started in Blender. Uh, I started the Spanish one in 2.79. Oh, right. So a? But no, but the, yeah, the live streams I did. Yeah. Recently, Sorry. tried to make some advanced cloth simulation and didn't find any tiering option. There's none. I was sure this feature had been added always in Blender since that's not the case. Any thoughts about that? Am I missing some hidden approach or what's going on? I, I heard there is a add-on that is great, but it's um, it's not it's not part of Blender internal. Blender. Yeah, okay. yeah. The, 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 just Google for it. I, I heard it's pretty good, and but what about the fracture modifier? How about it? We do have a another code from the the same developer that contributed the fracture modifier. It's being reviewed in this week, next week. So the fracture modifier is still in the big agenda. In big, big agenda. Big, big, big agenda. All right. And also, Damian mentioned that he'll be happy if one of the developers would start its own string channel on how to code for Blender. Oh, why why its own channel? We have a Blender developer channel. Yeah, but of course, if you want to make a, your own channel, you're welcome to. Buenas tardes. I can't, I can't even catch <laughs> the Blender Today show as I always have work. Oh, I still watch it as soon as I get home. I live in South Africa, so our times are very similar. I have questions. First, I'm happy to see that there have been improvements in cycles, but I am wondering if we would ever get proper light path tracing, such as look score with bi di bi directional lighting. I don't think we're going to get bi directional any soon. I don't want to promise what we won't get, but we, this is something that uh, the cycle developers are aware of, that some people like it, especially for archivists. We were talking about this the other day, right? Yeah. Said, who needs actually, bi yeah, who needs, yeah. <laughs> actually, a lot of people. <laughs> But it's not in the current cycles uh, <coughs> roadmap, I believe. No. Is there any? Uh, is there a way that we can use or change this image sequencer node so that we can have a specific image in a sequence display at a time? That's image the whole point of the offset. No. But you don't want to use the offset. The image sequencer node. Ah, yeah, the offset. So uh, scrolling through the timeline to find a certain frame, I would like to. Yeah, no. Not that I know. Not that I know. No. Nope. Um, let's see. Anoka, will the FBX add-on finally get its well-deserved fixes and improvements? Well-deserved. It's a closed source format. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of hope that just GLTF takes over the industry by yes, storm. Let's hope. Open source for the win. Come on. <laughs> FBX? <laughs> no. I was talking to Bastian today. Bastian has been the FBX maintainer for years, and he was asking. I was asking. He, he at some point he wanted to be involved with the Alembic project in USD because in all his years of maintainer of add-ons, 
and formats has always been the hard to maintain ones, the ones that are poorly documented. So you want to have some fun <laughs> and yeah. support a properly documented and open standard format. Yeah, unlike FVX. That being said, FVX is officially inside of the Blender uh, add-on, so uh, all the fixes, uh, if it doesn't work, it's going to be fixed because it's part of Blender um, add-ons that come built with it. But... I, my dream is that one day Blender will become big enough to kind of afford to not care about uh, proprietary uh, formats and only focus on open standards and use like USD, like Pixar, OpenVDV, like DreamWorks, OpenXR, everything open. All right, let's go to the bottom because I actually just reached the um, bottom. Okay. So, and I do five. Oh fuck! Uh, five. <coughs> it's five, late. No, four. Five. Uh, five more questions, and uh, we are done. All right. Hi, Pablo. Pablo is Optics going to get adaptive subdivision anytime soon? Uh, I don't know. I don't know actually. I have no idea. But the nice thing is that Optics is being developed by Nvidia developers. So it's actively developed. So it's yeah. not actually Blender Foundation putting the source resources in it. It's NVIDIA putting the resources in it. So uh, let's hope. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's hope. Pablo, can, when can we expect shader to RGB in cycles? Oh, Don't we have this? Or no. we have only for EV? No. Only for EV. I thought it was the other way around. Wait. Shader to RGB? Yeah, shader to RGB. No. Or is the other way? I don't know. Is one of the those don't f don't don't work? <laughs> <laughs> How are the face? Hi, uh, Dalai. Are the face maps going to be used for this? Depends on what you call face maps. Oh, that's what you call. You're correctly calling them. They are face yes. No, but that's the, the whole idea of the face map project. Yeah. So yes. And actually, there was a, there was um, a, an Adam that would do that. But yeah, that's the goal for for ringing mainly. So Next. One, two, three, so number four. Uh, hey, yo, what's popping, Pablo, my man? Are there any plans to improve the texture editor or is it just going to get removed at some point? It would be radical if it could be used to make substance designer type procedural <laughs> textures that could be plunked into the shader editor. It will not be removed unless we have a, a replacement. No? And I mean, if there's no replacement, why why? To <laughs> <move> well, <laughs> 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 I know a friend, post. yes, I know a VGE friend. <laughs> Um, but we all would love to have more advanced, maybe node node based texture editor. We had node based, but more robust, integrated with EV, real time and wrapping. We just don't have this as the main priority for this year. But in everything can happen in the future. Yeah. Yes, I actually use a texture editor a lot, like more than I think that I like to admit. <laughs> 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 but uh, it, it works. I mean, for many cases, it works. It's just a very limited. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I hope. Because painting textures and everything is the future. After that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. In so Blender. We probably wrap up the whole sculpting project for 2.83. So I think the borrower was bringing it up. And then for 2.9 and on, we can start working on the texture painting pipeline. Pablo, last question. Oh. I was wondering, yeah. what's the status of Animation 2020? <laughs> was digging into rigging and there's some features that are missing. or not able to find a valid wrap modifier. And would love to sculpt shape keys on mesh caches. Ooh. I know I can import uh, the mesh cache as a sequence. I know there's a workaround, but that's not very handy when it comes to UX. So how, what can I do? What can I expect? Help me. Well, the animation 2020 is a, uh, it's a state of mind. <laughs> no, it's not a state of mind. It's a, it's a collective of many projects, right? You can, you can do play, playback, can be improved. That is part of animation. The UV edit, the UV, the graph editor, the dope sheet or the timeline or rigging features is just super big. Good news is that there are developers involved in this full time. Sirian Stubel is actually here at the studio and he's working on this full time. He's a he's an animation developer, right? Now, right? Mm, not full time, of course. I mean, he's a full time developer and he works like two days a week ish on the. Alembic and UST importer, and then today's a week on bug fixing and the module and everything. But it's animation 2020. Yes, like Alembic, um, um, like in, like making import export USD Alembic. Yeah, and, yeah. and the and if you if you look actually at what he's been committing lately, he's done a lot of uh, a lot of. Oh, I need to be logged in, but I oh, can see in the activity ish. 
you can see here in the activity it's actually very silly that it asks you to but um but you can see all the yeah the constraints improvements for uh, rigging for code quality day even um you're right alembic and usd and the one alembic fps improvement that i was mentioning one fps actually is uh Severin made it so yeah they are the light is uh no the the grass is green for animation 2020 animation in 2020 2020 in blender in 2020 and beyond and beyond all right i think we made it to our to the end of the show it's been a bit of all over the place sorry about that i'm gonna make a because at first i started with like the new things i talk about the recap then i talk then i had cake suddenly in the cloud then uh, but that's nice that's what makes a live stream live that's why it's a live stream not the weekly recap Exactly, and that's so boring. I mean, it took me two days to make that recap video. One, like half a day to well, one and a half day, one half a day to record the thing because apparently I can speak when I, it's live stream, but when I have to rehearse it and say it, I can't do it. I just keep repeating it. Just keep doing it. I'm going to get it right. Yeah, at some point I'm going to grow up. Then <laughs> le- <laughs> And then editing another day and just trying to make it too, too, um, just too, yeah, too much. But did you watch the um, the recap video? Of the previous week, yes. Uh, by previous, I mean the week before the previous one. Blender. What do you mean? There has only been one. So I did watch it. <laughs> you didn't do it last week? No, last week I did one. But the week before I did it... I saw this one, I, yes. I, I, started, I recorded the, the previous one, but I didn't publish it, actually. it was uh, I wasn't in the good week that week. I saw this one. Oh, this you was from last week? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, so... It was, uh, it was pretty good, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it, it's just the same, but, uh, I, you know, I have to add the titles and the thing and edit everything, so it just takes... <sighs> and I like how, since we don't monetize it, we don't care much about having it longer than 10 minutes, ah, just, so like, not. rank higher, you know, this new trend on YouTube. Well, so. I mean, I think at some point maybe we should <laughs> monet, like enable monetization at least because that way um, the... YouTube algorithm will pick it up and put it higher on the list. Yeah, like but I mean, I just mean you don't need to do those. Like all the videos that you see here, they are all monetized. I bet. Yeah, they are. Like, but it and you above know, 10 like minutes. Look, 10 minutes and 47 seconds. They're all about 10 minutes and 10 minutes. So I think if we, we would have a better cho- chance because 15,000 views looks like a lot, but actually if you look at all the old ones, it's just not so much. Even the live stream gets the live stream was 40,000 and it was only 15,000. <laughs> I mean, it's not saying that it's not a lot. I appreciate the views, but it could be much bigger than this. I agree, I agree. Anyway, it's been a fantastic week. I've been all over the place, but Terminal Monetization just don't drop an F-bomb. I never drop an F-bomb. <laughs> I'm a good boy. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. I need to finish my cake. All right, so uh, thank you uh, for dropping by. Yeah, it was, uh, was fine. Just uh, I was expecting to be here a bit later, only for the questions, but it's always fun to see the... News as well, so I don't need to watch the video myself. Yeah, well, I mean, you made the... <laughs> I the, followed the Yeah, <laughs> but the news all over the place. What can we expect for next week? Well, so many things, because the Chris Spencer, I think, covered that. Chris Spencer is here. Yeah, it's merged. Should go try it. For Monday, I don't know, but they're going to have undo very sh- coming very undo soon. Undo improvements. We already have undo, but it's a lot of people think it's slow. Motores, volume... So it's hard to tell because we just shift the deadline for another week. But honestly, Monday, we're Blender probably going to have almost everything. Hopefully everything. So Blender multi-res fixes. Yeah, multi-res improvements, undo improvements. Volume objects. Volume objects, open VDV support for yeah. volume objects. And oh. um, and uh, that's all you undo we mentioned. Yep, that's most of it. And Only icons for sculpting. <laughs> <laughs> icons for yeah, the tools are missing, right? Hi, yes, priority. We knew I was going to work on that today. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm waiting for. I'm gonna see what people are saying about the undo because I, I don't really. Uh, everybody's asking well for it. All right, All right, let's go. Okay, get ready for theme people. Yes, listen to K in the chat. Let's um, do it again next week, same place, same time. Right, 16 of March. It's gonna be next week, and the week after. No, two weeks after is the time. I just want days to get longer. I just hate winter. Oh, the the time light saving time. Daylight saving daylight in Europe time. at least. All right. So uh it's been a pleasure. Let's do it again. 
tune in for the recap. I'm going to try and publish it tomorrow. Otherwise, it's Wednesday. Wish me luck with that. I hope to do it tomorrow. And let's do it again next week. Good luck with that. See you another time. Maybe we can do some... <laughs> yeah, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Maybe we can just wrap it up. Come on. Wrap it up. Okay, okay, okay. Right. I, just, I just wanted their feedback. Okay, quickly. Give me your feedback. What do you think I should do with this live stream? Should I do only recap and just do only Q&A? Just do this. Let me let me know what you think. It's been great. Five, four, three, two, one. Sorry. I will see. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye.